Whenever we're plotting on a chart, we want to be as accurate as possible, whether that's for a Coast Guard exam or just if we're navigating our boat along. Here's three tips to be a little bit more accurate using the tools of chart plotting. The first tip I would say is don't necessarily think you have to always use the compass rows when you're measuring directions, right? So for example, I have this track line from Coast Guard Station Castle Hill over to Mackerel Cove here in Newport, Rhode Island. And this is the track line that I want to follow. It's what I want to measure. I need to know what the bearing is. A lot of people are going to use the compass rows for that. They may take a parallel plotter like this, measure it, bring it down to the compass rows and read out a, a value. And that's fine. The only problem with that is the compass roses are not always conveniently placed around the chart, right? And so sometimes you have to travel quite a distance with your your rolling weems here or whether you're using a triangle, you know, you might need to move quite a distance in your triangle if you want to make sure you get to the compass rows. And if you see that little error that I made, the errors can compound over time. So the further away the compass rows is, the more you have to travel to get there, uh, the, the larger your error can be. Same with one of these kind of plotters if you have to walk your way down. So what you can do instead is use the um, measuring devices that are embedded in the tools themselves. So for this, this parallel plotter here, there's uh, this scale on the triangles. There's a scale as well for degrees. And likewise, on this style, there's a, a scale built in to the, uh, the parallel rules, right? The way these all generally work is they are read against a meridian or a line of longitude. So if you find any line of longitude on the chart, I'm highlighting a couple here, you can use the tool. Uh, and, and the point is you can have to travel a lot less far than going to the compass rows, right? And so in this case, you know, I might, line up this uh, track here, and then instead of coming all the way down to the compass rows, if I line this up, all I need to do is travel to a meridian and put this little crosshair on the meridian, and then I can read out the value that it's 295 degrees. So the way that it works is you put the crosshair on the meridian here, and then you follow that same meridian up and out the top up here, and you can read the value in this vicinity here. So it's between 290 and 300, 295, or the reciprocal would be 115. And it works upside down too. So say you were navigating over here like this. Instead of going all the way to the compass rows, you just put the crosshair on the meridian, follow that meridian down until you read the scale, and it says 295 degrees. Same thing works for the triangles if you prefer that. So I line the, the course up, and instead of a crosshair, I've got this little, what's called vertex. So if I travel this triangle, not all the way to the compass rows, but just to a meridian, I don't have to travel that far. I put the vertex on the meridian, and then I follow that same meridian down, and I can see that the value where it comes out down here is 115, it's between 110 and 120, or the reciprocal would be 295, between 290 and 300. So this scale is good. And of all the tools, the triangles are the best. They've got the best scale. It's uh, the biggest scale that you can use. Likewise, if you're using one of these, you can kind of line up your track line. And then for this one, you need to bring the south point to a meridian, close it up, and then you can read out here, 115 is gonna be the bearing. So as long as it's lined up on a meridian, you're good to go. Tip number two is proper care of your dividers, right? Everybody's got a different preference. Some people are gonna say, you know, in the comments to this video that you should use this style because it doesn't mark up the chart, right? It doesn't actually put a pinprick in the chart. Problem is these are sometimes a little bit loose on the chart and they can slide around a little bit. So if you prefer this style of dividers, that's fine. Um, I prefer a different route. I think the charts are kind of meant to be used and marking them up is okay. So this style here uh, has a built-in mechanism that allows them to retain their shape. And this one here has, you know, same kind of principle, but a different style. Now the thing with dividers is over time they're going to wear out, right? So you can see this one is pretty loose. So this is a set of dividers that should be repaired or should be kind of retired. So we're going to take that away. This is a brand new one out of the box. This is my favorite style, the Weems and Plath ones. Um, they kind of hold their shape really well. And uh, so that's kind of the first part of dividers is making sure that your dividers are in good shape. The second thing is um, making sure that the, the graphite and the the metal tip are the same length. So you can see in this set of dividers, right, that they're not the same length. And the problem with that is, if I were to exaggerate it and push this all the way in, 
there's this weird difference there and it's going to have some effects when you're uh, measuring on the chart and trying to draw an arc so first thing is make sure that these are the same length or as close as possible to the same length and then the second thing is that if you look at the dividers they kind of angle in a little bit on both sides and so you want your graphite here this little part here kind of oriented the same way as the needle and so I prefer to have the beveled edge of the graphite on the outside of the divider so that you get a nice sharp point when these are set some people prefer it the opposite way okay with the point kind of like that and Honestly, you're not gonna find a huge difference there, but as the graphite gets kind of worn down, you can end up with smudgier lines. So in my book, this is the right way to do it. Same length and the beveled edge on the outboard side. Now, speaking of um, graphite getting worn down, often if you find, if you buy yourself some, some extra leads, extra graphites, they're gonna come with some sandpaper, or you can have you know your own piece of sandpaper in there as well. And it's worth always kind of keeping these things uh, sharp. All right, so a little bit of uh, cleaning there will make this edge nice and sharp. So when you go to draw an arc on the chart, you get a nice crisp line that uh, isn't blurry at all and it'll help your accuracy a great deal. Tip number three, we're back to these tools. And um, the other recommendation I would make with these is oftentimes people use the edge of the parallel plotter when they're measuring a bearing, right? And that's fine, it's, it's gonna be fine most of the time. Uh, but it's a little bit more accurate if you use this embedded black line that's on your tool. So you can see this black line, and it's on all three tools. You could use the edge or you could use the, the black line that's built in here. They are parallel. You can use the edge or the black line that's in there. Um, and the advantage to using the black line is that, you know, my eyeballs right now are right where the camera is. And so if you're using the edge, it's somewhat hard to see like over the the edge itself and you could be off ever so slightly right but if you use the black line it's easy to see whether you're on one side or another of the line or if you're just a little bit cockeyed you know that's a that's a degree or two difference right there so using the black line you can make sure that you bisect both points of your waypoints and make sure that you've got the most accurate bearing possible likewise on the triangles you know if you're setting up your triangle you could use the edge or you can use the embedded black line sliding that around make sure that you're exactly on that black line not on one side or another not a little bit cattywampus there and then finally on the parallel plotter same thing you know there's a magnified beveled edge on the uh, the north side in this case of it but it's a little bit easier for me to line up that black line make sure that i'm bisecting those two points on my track line before i do any measuring so if you want more tips on chart plotting i've got a course available on my website practicalnavigator.org it's an affordable course. If you want to take 50% off, you can use the coupon code YouTube and it goes into chart plotting in great detail for passing your Coast Guard exam. As always, thanks for watching and happy navigating.